What's up, guys? NOAA's has just released its 2018-2019 uh, winter forecast. And so what I thought I would do in this video is compare their forecast to my forecast. And we'll go over a couple of key differences. We'll go over the storm tracks, what I think they're forecasting for and what I'm forecasting for. And then I'll show you some snowfall totals and stuff like that. So first, uh, we're taking a poll here. Do you want above average snow or below average snow? Comment below. I'm taking a poll. I just kind of want to see what people's uh, you know opinions are for uh, on this channel. So let's get right into this forecast. NOAA, we'll look at NOAA's first, then we'll look at mine for temperatures here, and then get on to precip. They're forecasting above average temperatures for much of the United States this year, especially for the west half. Now, the important thing to understand here is these are probabilities. These aren't, you know, this doesn't mean it's way above average out here and slightly above average. This means the chances of, of above average temperatures. So if you see this first shade right here, 33 to 40% chance of above average temperatures. Here it's you know 40 to 50 and up here is 50 to 60. And here it's equal chance. So one equal chance means is it 33% chance, you know, maybe you could go below average and 33% chance it could be above average or anything in between there. So it's an equal chance. It's kind of, uh, you know, rolling the dice here. You know, there's small little tiny clim climatological areas sometimes in the U.S. that are hard to forecast, you know, this far out. And so they can vary quite a bit. And then you got Alaska and Hawaii with a good chance of being above average temperatures. So why are they doing this? Well, this is, uh, <clears throat> I think that they're looking at El Nino here. We got warming waters out here in the Pacific Ocean. I think they're also looking at the MJO. They're factoring that pattern in. And then there's probably going to be some warming out here that cause a very warm east half the United, or west half of the United States and then, um, you know, potentially cooler east. And then El Nino is going to bring a, a, you know, persistent jet stream across the southern U.S. It brings wet conditions, cloudy, which brings some cooler air in. And then you get some ridging and warm air out in the west. And so I think that's what they're looking at. This year might be a little bit different. We might begin a, a, a Modokai El Nino which kind of looks more like this. The warming occurs more in the center of the Pacific Ocean, and that changes the pattern just a bit. And so that's kind of looking more like what their forecast is. But with a Modica, you usually get a drier southwest United States, which probably won't be the case, and then a, a wet east and southeast, which probably will be the case. Now, my forecast is factoring in this uh, PDO, positive PDO with a weak, weak El Nino. And then I'm also, whoops, I'm also factoring in some other things, but we're not going to get into that in this video. I'll link you to my full detailed winter forecast at the end of the video where you can explore more here. But uh, with this type of pattern, you get a cooler east. And I also think there's a lot of, uh, of Arctic uh, you know, uh, snowpack building up here. And I think you're going to get a lot of uh, polar vortexes to break off you know, this winter, well, you know, a couple here and there, and track into the eastern United States. And I think that's going to bring cooler than average temperatures. So some similar years uh, to what I'm thinking are 09, 10, 02, 03, 14, 15, 93, 94, and 1916, 70. And that's what the temperatures looked like. Much uh, above average for the west and slightly below to moderately below in the east. And then precipitation-wise, it was kind of like that with above average in the blues below in the yellows and reds. And so my temperature forecast differs just a bit. I'm factoring in some of those other factors. So I'm going to go for below average temperatures for the, e with the, yeah, the east half and then above average temperatures for about the western third of the United States with average in between. And uh, this is in terms of the degrees, you know, three degrees below, or yeah, average of three degrees below, an average of two degrees below and one degree below. So really, one or two degrees can make a big difference. Now, the area in dark blue here is what I would call moderately below average. The areas in this light blue and this light blue is slightly below average. Out here, it's going to be above average. Okay, this area in this pink one to two degrees can be slightly above average. And then the three to four degrees, it's going to be moderately to much above average temperatures. So remember, a degree or two within a snowstorm can make a huge difference. Going from 31 to 32 you know, to 33, a couple of degrees there, that makes a huge difference. Now, what is a National Weather Service forecasting for precipitation? Well, they got above average in the green here. Again, probabilities here. So 33 to 40%, 40, 50, and then uh, 60 to 70% over here. And then below average up 
in the Ohio, well, you know, parts of Ohio, Michigan, uh, the upper Midwest, Great Lakes region, and then uh, below average out in Montana. And uh, that kind of looks like a typical El Nino. And then you got above average in Alaska and below average in Hawaii. And, you know, sometimes you'll get drier, warmer conditions up here with this pattern. And then uh, wet, cool conditions along that subtropical jet with an active storm track of just several, you know, small storm systems moving across the southern United States. Now, what I think is going to happen this year is this polar jet might be diverted a little bit farther west into the south, and it might dive up the east coast, bringing more uh, storms up the east, eastern coast, potentially nor'easter too as well. And the years I pick for a typical El Nino, you usually get that below average out here, and then above average kind of along the southern tier of the U.S. It's going to look a little bit different because I think they're we got a factor in a little bit of this Modokai and then some other factors that I have coming in. And it, you know, you kind of average this stuff out. And uh, this is what I got for my forecast right here, precipitation-wise. Pretty similar, actually, except this region right here, that's more of a wild card. That's what I'm calling the wild card zone, the casino zone. We'll get into that in a second. You know, it's, it's a little more uncertain, but I think overall this black area, this in between here, this dark area is going to average out. Um, and then uh, the greens are going to be above average here, and the browns are going to be below average out there. And in terms of uh, percents above average, you take your annual average uh, precipitation for your winter between December, January, and February. You add those up, and then you average them out, and then you add or subtract this percentage here. Okay, so if it's over here, it's below average, so you take 20% off. If it's over here, it's above average, so you add 20%. So if you had 10 inches on average, this would be 20% more, which would be 2 inches more, which would be 12 inches, and then vice versa up there. And so I'm thinking, you know, slightly above average for the areas in the 20 to 40% range, and then much above average right here in this 60% range. And then out here, it's going to be uh, much below average. Like, you know, there's a little bit of uncertainty here along the coast. I'm actually uh, tempted to maybe even draw this back we're gonna have another update coming in december or november excuse me and i might kind of push this back a little bit and include more of an average outlook for that area and then uh, average for much of southern california and uh central california so snowfall wise this is factoring in the cold as well we got a below average out here for much of the west that's because there's warmer temperatures doesn't necessarily mean there's gonna be below average precip all the way this far south but it's because it's going to be warmer, there's probably going to be less snow. And then above average out here in much of the southern and eastern United States. And I know some of these areas don't get snow, but I just you know threw that in. Hey, if you're going to get snow, it might be above average this year. This is what the percentages look like. Same ordeal as the precip, pretty much. Uh, this 20% is extended a little bit farther south, again, because it's going to be warmer. And then uh, your above average is going to be over there. And then in between could be anywhere between negative 20 and 20% of average so this is the overview right here we're thinking uh, average conditions really the most average winter is going to be kind of here in the central west part of the united states we call that the average joe zone with the uh, average uh, snow rain precip the desert's going to be here in the northwestern united states with warm conditions and much drier conditions here in the sauna it's going to be average precipitation maybe slightly above average and warmer than average temperatures the winter warrior zones where all the storms are going to track up along, I think, this winter. And you're going to get several storm systems. It's going to be a rain-snow battle zone. You're going to have snow, ice. The jungle here is going to be cooler temperatures, rainier conditions, maybe even occasional snow, a little bit here and there, but probably just mostly rain in that area. And then the snow factory this is where the coldest and snowiest is going to be. It's going to be along the eastern seaboard and, you know, maybe extending as far out into the you know the east half of the Ohio Valley and then the casino zone is kind of a hit or miss area this is the most uncertain area where I think it's overall going to average out but some areas might score big if they can kind of get in on some of these storm tracks as well so that's kind of how uh, the forecast shape up between na the National Weather Services and and mine again I'm factoring a couple other factors um, that you know, might affect this winter. I, I disagree in some areas. I think the east is going to be a little bit cooler. I think there's going to be a little bit more of a, a snow impact for the east half of the United States. And again, I made a video where I go much more in detail on how I put this winter forecast together. You can just click it up here 
to check that out. So with that said, that is my forecast for this year. Remember to just comment below, do you want above average or below average snow? And if you like videos like this, uh, smash that thumbs up button and uh, be sure to subscribe. We got weekly videos. Monday, we got state of the weather addresses. These are long range forecast breakdowns. We look for storm systems that are coming up across the United States and North America for the weeks ahead. Wednesdays, we got weather tutorials occasionally, you know, a few Wednesdays each month. And then uh, Fridays, we got surprise videos, just random videos, storm chases, stuff like that. And then occasionally, we'll have a random video here and there. So go ahead and sub uh, click subscribe if you like videos like this. Check out the winter forecast, and I'll see you soon.